Welcome, everyone. Isn't this exciting? On a day when we are going to have, what, 77 to 80 degrees? Isn't that exciting? How appropriate the hot licks come to us. <laughs> Wonderful. And celebrate as we have moved through uh, winter into this amazing spring. And Greg Pearson, I am so delighted you have come back to us to share with us in our conversations and coffee your drummers. And I say to Greg, how did you come to this? Do you all know Greg's story? No? Well, let's share it. Um, his parents always encouraged him to do this, to be about music, to be about celebration. And his father and mother bought him a whole drum set huh? Uh, when he was in, uh, what, middle school, about that? Mm -hmm. And uh, so as he uh, enjoyed that, he went on to Capital University in music. And as he did that, he went back to his middle school time, huh? K through 12, and uh, shared that talent with students. What a gift, huh? For middle schoolers, wow. And as you loved it, you then took this out into the world, working for uh, Carnival Cruise, mm -hmm and visiting many different countries. What, what would you like to say about all of that? Well, musically, it was a challenge because you had to, um, I was in the um, show band, and so you had to read these charts and you had to follow the strict uh, timing and everything, and then you had to play for the Mexican juggler or. Um, or maybe the Motown singer. And so you had to learn a lot of different styles of music and you had to learn it right now. There was not much tolerance for um, not being able to play the music. And so they wanted to fire me actually after the first two weeks. <laughs> but I, for the first three months on the, um, I practiced, I didn't even get off the ship for three months. They got tired of hearing me back there. Uh, and they ended up extending my contract. And so I was out there for about 10 years off and on um, in different ships. We were all over, you know, Central America, all over the Caribbean, Alaska, Hawaii. Uh, beautiful, I mean, you know, just to look at the mountains in Alaska or um, the lush vegetation in Hawaii and things like that. It's, it's, it's a great, it was a great job. It was a great job. Wonderful, and you take all of that spirit to us, huh? So delighted you are at the Martin Janus Center. And I can tell different ones are saying we are too, huh? And are you not talented? I can't imagine sitting there as you were following every little step of Greg's leadership. And Greg says, now, uh, would anybody else like to do this? And I'm thinking, uh-oh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but your courage says, maybe we can, huh? Oh, yeah, we got, we're going to get some folks up. In oh, we are, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, I'm seeing that you, uh, another great talent was that you were for four years at, um, where, where did you teach? Central High School. Central High School. Which is now Coastal. Kosai, yeah. So, uh, we were the River Rats. The River Rats. Oh wow. And I was the band director. I was the marching band director there. Oh yeah. The marching, the marching band, and um, we also had uh, orchestra and and a cadet band, and um, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yes, uh, we had several groups there, and we performed a lot of concerts, and um, so. In school, like my father, he wanted me to be able to get a job, so he didn't want to waste his college money, so I, he made me take these education. It just so happened that when I left uh, Capitol, uh, where I student taught at Central, and the teacher there uh, left and went to Eastmore, 
And so there was a vacancy, and the student said, hey, why, why don't you hire that guy? And so I, I taught there for four years. I think I was there two, uh, I left there two years before they closed. And then I started going on the road and played with a top 40 band, and we were all over Florida and out west. And um, then I was a jazz trio, and we were in New York, and. Uh, played with um, some fancy hotels and with a reggae band. We went to Chicago a lot, and that was fun. Every little thing is going right. to be all right. That's right. <laughs> I imagine you sang that to yourself often as you were traveling and performing and, mm. and hardly had a lot of time to rehearse. Well, you know, that jazz trio, I'm going to tell you about being on the road. Um, this guy was such a taskmaster. He would, he came to my house two weeks before the first gig, oh. and we rehearsed for like eight hours a day for two weeks. Wow. So then we go to the gig in Indianapolis. We're playing at this fancy hotel, and um, we play the gig from nine to one. Then he wanted us to be back there at two o'clock in the morning, and we rehearsed from two to like, Wow. And because I, the same thing with the cruise ship, I wasn't really playing the music, so I would get back up at 9 a.m., go back down and practice. <laughs> then I would bring my drums up to my hotel room at 5 and practice some more and then play the gig, and this was for two weeks. And wow. after two weeks, he walked up to me and he shook my hand. <laughs> and you said, did it. You and did said, it. you got it. But well, tell it, me, Hot Licks, is he that tough on you? Sometimes, huh? Uh, tell us what it's like to be one of these privileged members. Oh, you look eager to say. No? She's going like this. Yes, yes. Well, it's very exciting. It's very exciting, and so he makes us work hard. And sometimes we make a mistake, but he has a lot of patience with us. And I, I am proud to be with Greg with the Hot Mix. I joined three years ago, and some of it has been very challenging, but I look forward to it every week. And then especially when we get to come out and, and share it with other people. Thanks, Greg. Uh -huh. Thanks, Greg. And uh, thank you for being at the Martin Janice Center, right? Yes. Uh-huh. All right, take it away. Okay. Well, we are going to um, do our warm-up when we come together. And I had to make a special shout out to Bertha Brandon there. She was one of our beginning members. Um, so she's our uh, drummer emeritus at this point. She comes out and supports us all the time. She's got the t-shirt and everything. Had to be thank Beth for uh, putting the t-shirts together. How about a hand for Beth over here and Bertha over here? So these... Um, the members have changed over the years, um, and we like to keep a core group to do things like this. We, uh, we, like, we let new members come in, but when we're getting ready for a performance, we, hey, we have to stop you know, letting people just come in. But anybody can do this, and I'll let you guys come up after we play a little bit and see um, how well you do. But it's, it's not that hard, it, it looks, like it's um, intricate, and it is, but if you kind of have certain rules, we have our own language, okay? Uh, it's not necessarily drum language. I write a few notes about the rhythms that we play, and I try to teach them. Um, give you an example. Uh, we played the uh, drum part to uh, Bolero, right, but a while ago. And those of you who know Ravel's Bolero is tut, let me, I'll, I'll play it for you.
That's the drum. So we, um, Gail, do you remember? Is. Then you can put the cat back on the porch. Right. So we says, hey, turn out the light, turn out the light, and then turn out the light. Then you can put the cat back on the porch. <laughs> and then we have another, um, another little rhythm that's um, called Mama Dada. So I'll shout out, Mom, and we'll do that on our, in our warm-up. We'll shout out uh, things like that, and that's the a musical cue. To, because, you know, I, I'm not trying to get them to learn how to play, read music, just to um, hear something and reproduce it in a way that makes sense to them. So that's, you know, I want to make it as simple as possible so that, you know, you're not spending a bunch of time trying to learn something that's really not necessary to learn. It's not necessary to learn how to read in order to play. And a lot of your um, um, musicians that are well, uh, world-traveled, uh, well-known music can't read a note. Can't read a note. Uh, they just play by ear, and they just have played so much that they can just find it in their, on their instrument and they don't need to read. Now, I always say um, reading music doesn't necessarily record well, okay? Because, you know, you might be able to read, uh, if you're in the symphony orchestra or something like that, yes, you need to read. If you're in a big band, you, like when I went on the cruise ship, I needed to read all these charts. It was hard for me because it had been a long time since I had done that. Uh, but my schooling did help, my college schooling did help to at least get my foot in the door. But, you know, I was playing with, uh, for example, a bass player from Venezuela, and he knew all these Latin rhythms. And so he showed me how to play these Latin rhythms. Now, you can write these rhythms down. Anything that is, it's all mathematics, but the feel and how it flows, that's the most important thing. That's what records well. Okay, not what on a, on a piece of paper. So you always take what's on the paper and then you interpret it with your heart. Okay, so you take it in in your mind and you play with your heart. And what I like about uh, what we do is, is mind and body. It's physical and it's mental, which is something that anybody, especially seniors, can benefit from. Okay, so you're using your mind to figure out the rhythms but you're using your body to reproduce them, okay? So we're gonna do a little warm up here and we have a routine and then we'll see what we can bring some people up and uh, join us, okay?
Now that's our warm up. So we're going to play our routine and uh, see how that goes. Now, one thing I would like to say right now, and uh, nobody's perfect. I make mistakes when I'm telling them what to do, and I, you know, uh, we all we all make mistakes, and it's that's not the important thing. The important thing is to do it, you know. And most, I um, know a lot of professional singers and whatever, and they talking to one yesterday and. And she goes all over the world. Sometimes she forgets the lyrics. And so she kind of makes it up and ad libs and things like that. But the most important thing is to, is to do it, is to you know, not be worried about that. And, not, and if you make a mistake, um, to get back in. You know, that's the most important thing. Because we don't, nobody's perfect and um, you know, nobody's getting paid for this. Uh, so it's not necessary that you be worried about that. You know, we try to, I try to do the best I can to give them the tools, and they, they, you know, most of them bought their own sticks. They, they practice at home. I know Gail's dog had to listen to her <laughs> over and over again. So, you know, they put in the work. They put in the work to make this happen, and that's what gratifies me, to know that they come every week, and they're excited about it, and um, so it's all the worthwhile. So this is our second time here, and I want to thank Mary Ellen Shaughnessy uh, for uh, allowing us to come back and uh, entertain you again. So we're going to play our routines.
Okay, so now you guys can have a seat out here, and I would like to get some of you folks to come up and play. Jean, you want to come up? Come on. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Ladies, come up, play. Come up and play. John, you want to give it a shot? <laughs> Sir? Ladies, give it a shot. Give it a shot. It's easy. Come on. Okay, grab a seat. You want to try it? Yeah, try it. Okay. Ma'am, you want to come over and give it a shot? You guys want to try it? You want to try it? It's easy. Oh, yeah, Vasi can try it. Come on, Vasi. Come on, you can do it. Come on out. Iola, you want to give it a shot? Come on, come on, come on. Give it a shot, give it a shot. Come on out. Need some sticks? Okay. Okay, now, different sounds we get on the drum. The rim is laid in the front. Okay, we hold our sticks like this, this is real. This is called uh, match grip. Now, if you... Here, you know what we can look at? Um, yeah. Yeah. If you, um, if you watch rudimental players uh, in a marching band, they call... The, this is a traditional grip here. Uh, and the reason why you hold, they hold their sticks like this is because if you're marching with a snare on your side, you can't very well play like this. So you, they develop this. So this is uh, traditional, and but march, match grip is the easiest to pick up. So now, so we have the rim, we have the bass, and we have sides, and we have clicks. Okay, so we're going to play on the rim. Rim on the right stick, right stick on the rim, in tempo. One, two. One, two, right stick, go.
to the Friday game. I'm sorry. Ready? Go. Greg, let's see what people experienced in that with them. Yeah. No, let's let's talk about what it was like, Bozzy, for you to experience. What's it been like? Nervous, like I was all off beat. Anybody else? Yeah. Oh, it's fun. It's, uh, fun. I might I might join a group when I have to do. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, one of your people said she looks forward to it every week. Yeah, every week. What? What? Tell us a little more. Uh, we meet every Wednesday. We we meet every Wednesday at 11, 11 15. Greg has a previous commitment with a group of seniors for silver sneakers, and so we practice for 40, 45 minutes, and we've been practicing for two months on this routine and. We're getting better at it. <laughs> oh, I say. oh, more than better. Seems like the best, huh? Anybody else? What did it feel like? Fun? Relaxing? Oh, and you can take your answer all the Administrative work you're doing. Takes me back to college. I used to be a drummer in a band in college. So. Oh. <laughs> that was a hundred years ago. <laughs> you. Oh, wonderful. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. oh, you, oh, they want you to say something. It feels good to be connected to something, even if it's simple, sharing that with everybody. With you. Oh, now, I do got her to say something. What are you going to say about your experience? Thanks for coming listening to the Martin Janus. Ah, I don't know these people. I just came in off the street. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah, yeah, how wonderful, because we were with us the last time. Oh, yes, um, I started out with Greg when he first came, and I started out with Greg when he first came, and uh, he was going to start the drummers, and I kept saying, Greg, when are you going to start? Greg, when are you going to start? And when he started, there were four people uh, in the drumming uh, sector. There was myself, Alberta Carey, Maria, and uh, Mary. And uh, we kept going, and I told him, I says, well, you know, we gotta get some more people in here because we're seniors and we get sick. Uh, <laughs> things happen to us, and so then we begin to build up and get more and more in, and uh, it's just in my blood. I just love it, I love it, and I, every, until, I uh, had some trouble with my wrist, and then after that, I had to drop back a little bit, but before then, I just loved to go to practice. I would practice at home. I would be beating on the piano. I would be beating on a stick. I would be beating on anything because I wanted to get these rhythms in my head. I wrote the rhythms down so that I would be able to do them. And so, and... How do you write rhythms down? Uh, I just had my little method. <laughs> I, I could count music, so I just had my little method that I would use to remember what Greg wanted us to do, and because I was serious about this, and I mean, whenever he said practice, I was ready to practice. And so, and it's really something you have to be serious about. You go to all the practices, and you practice at home, and you just get the beat until you know what the, what the, uh, 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 rhythm is to it and so and I know when he was talking about Bolera I'm hoping that they will come back and do Bolera again because we started out and we never completed it but uh, we used to really perform at many different uh, areas like we would go over to Franklin Park when they had it there and then we would go to um, convalescent centers and um, some of the other places that we Health went. Fairs. Health fairs. Yes, it, we were just every place. And so it was just delightful to get out. Oh, 
Thank you, Grant. Thank you. And are you going to be performing for the Aretha Franklin tell? Well, the, um, they used to have a, a senior event at Franklin Park. They don't have it anymore. Um, it was kind of like a senior festival. They would, all the uh, rec centers would converge on Franklin Park. They'd have a big meal. And, and that, I think that was one of our best performances. We, you know, we used to have wear wi our white shirts and dark, but now we've stepped up <laughs> and have our own uniforms. Uh, we're going to be playing um, May the 1st at the Isabel Ridgeway um, Senior um, uh, Residence. So that'll be our, our next gig, and we'll probably play for some of our, we play for some of our special events. We have uh, Thanksgiving dinner or Easter, a special meal or something. We perform for our own center, and that keeps us in practice. To, you, I always thought that this was a performance group. It's good to practice every week. It's good to learn how to do these rhythms. I think it's gratifying personally, but I think I would be disappointed if we never got out and played for other, because it kind of puts you on the spot, you know, kind of puts you on the spot. And I think when we go through something like that and we succeed, then you're happy, you got something to think about and remember. And then we all go to some place uh, and eat together and enjoy fellowship. And that's a big part of it, the fellowship. When we have uh, birthdays, and, and I don't keep track of the birthdays like they do, uh, but you know they'll sign cards and they'll give out things. Um, Miss Tony makes us these, um, uh, she quilts these uh, pillows and she puts our pictures on them and she, she brings fruit and things like that for us. And, um, and Beth makes these um, necklaces, she made these necklaces for us. Um, and, you know, so we have some talented people that share their talents with the rest of us. Okay, we're going to do one more thing with you guys. We're going to do a um, uh, call and response. So I'll play something and then let's see if you can uh, copy it.
Perfect. Do you have anything else planned? Do you have anything else planned? We got a few more minutes. I want to thank the Cultural Arts Center and Ellen uh, Shaughnessy for inviting us. And uh, maybe we'll be back again. Thank you. So, there's some other questions? Three buckets because that's the, basically the right height. To, um, two, two is kind of low, four is kind of high. Um, so what happens is if, you, if it's too high, then you, you can't play on the, you kind of hit the front rim a lot. So we've, out of trial and error, we've mm -hmm. come up with three buckets. And I do this um, uh, for the Ohio State School for the Blind. I go there every Tuesday. And that's a, a challenge to, um, to work with them because, you know, they, they don't have the visual feedback. And so, um, you know, it was very challenging at first. And it was, you know, I don't know, I wasn't not having experience or training to work with that population. I was getting a little frustrated. But you know what? I went to the um, Veterans Memorial. And they had um, video of the soldiers. And they said, one of them said, in the military we have uh, what we call WSO, work stuff out. Aww. And so I redoubled my um, uh, commitment and um, changed a few things. And now we're getting ready for a performance there in uh, May. And so um, they're coming along. We, we got a routine completely different than what we do. And uh, it's interesting to see how, you know, they can't see, but they, they feel things on a different level. Um, so yes, that's something, you know, we've, I've done this at middle schools. I've done it um, at the YWCA. And I don't even know why I started at any of those places, but it just happened like at the Martin Janus Center. Anybody else have a question before we stop? Okay. That was wonderful, wasn't it? And, oh, yes, it was. And this is my, my you, helper Greg here, Pearson. Robin. She helps me out. Yeah, yeah. She, she likes to. Yes. Okay. My question is, I'm going to tell you, every Wednesday, if I have trouble playing the drums, me and Greg get together certain, certain days, he'll go, you got time to practice? And I go, yeah. Well, I'll stay in, in afternoon with me and um, Ellen gets done at the front desk. I'll stay and help him. He'll help me practice. Yeah. Right. Right, Greg? Right, right. We do extra so we work. we do. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Good days to you. Hmm? Yes. Taking that sound with us and that feel. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you. Oh, oh got you. Luther, thank you. Uh-huh. Fantastic. All that was happening through the drumming, huh?